significance and implications of the study. This is the next topic we are going to embark on. Now, significance of the study means importance of the study. Implications of the study means how the results will be important in different uh, fields or applications. So I'm talking about the importance of the study in chapter one of your thesis and in chapter five of your thesis. They are like two sides of a coin. So I decided that it is good that you learn these two things together. All right. So at the end of the lecture, you should be able to, number one, write the theoretical and practical significance of the study in chapter one. And also, the, number two, write the implications of the study in chapter five, because these two are connected. Two sides of a coin, significance and implications because they both talk about importance of the study. Significance, you write before you do the study. You have to convince people your study is important. Not just that you have a research gap, because you may find a gap, but then uh, it may be a topic that is not important to be studied. You know, but because we train you how to write the research gap, you somehow can write the gap, but then what you pick is not important. So you still need also to ensure that whatever topic you choose to study has significance. And that you do in chapter one. And later when you have collected the data, analyze the results, then you start to report the implications of the findings. This is after you got the results and you write it in the last chapter. So you see here in the chapter table of contents, chapter one, it is 1.4, the last section. In chapter five, it is the second because it comes right after the summary of the findings. These are the results of the study one, two, three. And this is how the findings are important to so and so and to the field of knowledge. Okay. So let's go to the chapter one significance of the study. This is in the last part of the chapter one. In the journal paper, it is usually the last part of the introduction section because introduction is like chapter one. I'm, I'm telling you where it is so that when you read papers, you know where to look for the significance of their study. And from there, you learn how to write it like them. Or sometimes you can borrow their statements and just cite it. This is how you be wise about justifying the importance of your study. It doesn't always have to be your original words. You can use somebody else's word, but you just have to cite them. There is no stealing of ideas involved. So that's why I need to tell you where you find it. The introduction is the first part of the paper and uh, the last paragraph will usually give you the research gap. And a lot of researchers, right after they tell you the research gap, they will tell you the significance of the study because it is like this. If I give you a cup of water, uh, half, you can look at it as a half full or you say half empty. When you talk about the research gap, we are talking about the half empty, what we still don't understand. But when you're talking about the significance of the study, we are talking about the half full cup. If after you understand it, what else do we know better about that topic or phenomenon? So it's... Uh, also, again, two sides of a coin, how you write it. When you write about the gap, you write about the negative things, something we don't understand yet. And when you have uh, got the findings, you write about the positive things. Now we've got the findings, what do we understand better about it? So two types of significance, theoretical significance and practical significance. So theoretical significance, I signify academia using the mortar board. So we know this is for the university. Then practical significance, I didn't know what icon to use. Finally, I thought usefulness, a broom is very useful. So I use a broom to signify practical significance to help you fix this in your mind. Uh, theoretical significance, we are talking about how your results will fill in the gap of knowledge. And when this happens, how it helps us to understand the topic or research area better. Practical significance, like how your broom can help uh, you to make your room cleaner, the results of the study will help to solve a practical problem. Uh, it is good if you can write about both. I give you an example of a theoretical, theoretical significance of the study. 
And when you read through this, you tell me what new knowledge will fill in the gap. Okay, I have already boxed it in green here. This study will complete the other studies that have been done on physical space by taking into consideration ungkapan implicit. So studies that use the semantic inquisitive approach will combine data, theory, cognition, and philosophy in order to bring out the akal budi melayu melalui ruang because they want to go into this ruang, the concept ruang. So this is writing the new knowledge. You see the first part goes for the uh, data, okay? Then the next part tries to say that with this combination of theory and data, it will bring about better understanding. Now, when we want to write theoretical significance of the study, you have to refer to the research problem. Um, here, just now that one, you look at the title there, concept, concept Ruang, okay? So that is their topic or the focus. Then you turn it around and you write it positively. So the gap is something not well understood. Theoretical significance is what is better understood if you have the results from your study. And like all writing, it should move from general to specific. You start generally on the research problem, you move to specific. Next, we have practical significance of the study. How will the results help people? And not only that, who will benefit? This is about communication strategies in meaning. So let's just look at the box. This study will determine strategies that are used by students for continuity in conversations for native speakers. And the strategies can be taught to other students. So this one immediately goes for practical benefits that comes about after you do a study on communication strategies in foreign languages. And this is written in chapter one. How to write practical significance of the study? You refer to the research problem. Yes, we always go back to the research problem because that's where it all starts. Okay, think of the usefulness of the results you will get. What problems will it solve in daily life? If you are trying to teach English in an interesting way, the problem it solves is uh, people are more interested to learn English, then they can speak English better. Think of who can use the results and improve some things about teaching of English, teachers can use the results. Maybe university students, but usually you have to be careful about uh, talking about the students because students don't read uh, journal papers, you see, so they cannot benefit from the results. But teachers, yes, they can read the, the papers. School, a certain topic are good for school counselors, certain topics are good for educational planners. So you have to see who benefits from the results. Again, always start from general, but be specific later. So I'm giving you a paper that I myself wrote with uh, my master student and then uh, my colleague. So I will show you one part and ask you, is this theoretical or practical significance? Can you tell me based on the green arrows? However, little is known. Theoretical. Theoretical, yeah. Every time you say little is known, <laughs> it's going for theoretical. Okay, further evidence, further evidence. Huh? To our knowledge, Murudi and Ting 2019 is the only published study on the media framing of 1MDB. They found blah, 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 blah. blah. Other research uh, talk about financial angle, but they did not analyze how newspapers present 1MDB. It is important. Second green arrow, it is important to study the framing of one MDB issue 
to investigate how the media assert influence on public and international interest for its serious ramification on blah blah blah. So there is further, 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 further explanation on it, and it leads to a question. Okay. All right, yeah, I've done that part. So it is the theoretical because I didn't say anything about the journalist. I didn't say anything about journalists can learn to write after I've got the findings. They can learn to write in a careful way. Uh, if I want to write like that, then I'm going for the practical significance. But I want to talk about the, the more abstract part of things, you know, how people report controversial events that involve high ranking political figures. So it is going very theoretical. Next, we jump to the last chapter, implications of the study. Implications of the study is position right after the results or the findings. Okay. Implications of the study also has the theoretical and the practical. Implications, you know, we just use this word implicacy. It is like so abstract, but it just means the importance of the findings. Is it important for policy, for government policy, for certain practice or ways of doing things for theory, that is for the field, and therefore subsequent research? Okay, how is it important? Theoretically, it is important because you have added new knowledge to the field. No matter what, you have some found something new. So we, have, we now can understand the research topic slightly better. Practical significance, how your findings can solve practical problems. So you see how it's connected way back to the uh, chapter one. So you will have to write connected to this. So here, implication of results on newspaper readers. The pink box here, the star and Malaysia kini, whether before or after the general election, has a tendency in news reporting to because of this tendency in news reporting, readers may be unclear about the history, causes, etc., etc. Okay, let me explain to you the background. Uh, from our research, we found that 90% of the articles are what we call episodic reporting, which means they report only this event. Where, who, how, when. Only this event. Only 10% are thematic, which means they are like, commentaries or documentary, which gives a background, which gives connection to other, other events and so on. So 90% were episodic. So what does this mean? It means that readers may be unclear about the history, the causes, the background and so on, because today they pick out the article, this is all they get. They don't know that this is a series of events leading to this article today. You see, so, um, if, but this result is actually no big deal. A lot of studies found this, but I wanted to discuss this, so I have to make a very big deal of it. I did discuss this earlier. Now, this one here is about the implication already. So I then explained this actually is also important because readers are not clear of the background and you think, yeah, we all know that, but you know, when the topic is so controversial, this is actually a good strategy because if readers are not so clear about their background, they do not think this issue is that important, doesn't affect me, he said, oh, just those people here in this story today, you know, so even though it is something that happens a lot of time in the newspaper, they go for episodic, but you can draw implications from it and tell the meaning of it. Now you see, that's why we don't know that it actually affects us because newspapers always make us just focus on this thing only, it didn't give us the background. So we say, uh, this is the implication of the results on newspaper readers. So to sum up, in chapter one, you have two types of significance. Theoretical significance, where you talk about the good things that happen or the new knowledge that you get when the research gap is filled in. The practical significance, you write about how your results will solve a practical problem. And when it comes to chapter five, when you want to close it off, you tell them again. Yes, earlier I told you there are this kind of significance. Now I truly have the evidence for it because I already got my results. This is how my findings are useful for government policy, for how people do things, and also for theory to increase knowledge. <laughs>